Welcome to North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. Alongside the head coach, I'm Greg Ankers inside Ralph Engelstead Arena, where for a second consecutive year, there will be an NCHC championship banner hung from the rafters. Coach, first off, congratulations on what your guys were able to accomplish throughout the weekend. A lot more to go, but this is a major box to check off, is it not? Yeah, you know, absolutely. This is one of the boxes that we uh, wanted to check off uh, when we came into camp here in, in August. You know, we, we set a, uh, a lot of goals into motion here early on in the year, and uh, this was one of them, and now uh, we want to move on to the next one. Well, let's get to how you got to this point, and before we go to the highlights, I want to touch on a couple things going into Friday night against Omaha. A couple keys. Troy Stetcher out due to the suspension, but you got Bryn Chizik back. The lineup continued to shuffle. How did you feel going into Friday night? Well, you know, anytime uh, that you lose a player like Troy Stetcher, you know, that's a, that's a major impact in your lineup, but again, like... <laughs> Uh, this year with adversity of injuries and different things like that, you know, guys come into the lineup and I thought our guys did a tremendous job, not only our D-men but our forwards and our goaltending of, of uh, you know, making the most out of the situation and, and they did. Well, let's take a look now at Friday night's action from Baxter Arena in Omaha and coach the theme right from the drop of the puck was pace and up and down the ice it was pretty wide open for most of the night. Yeah I thought they gave us a push early here in the game as you can see off the rush the Genzo line uh, you know you, another good player making a good play and uh, I, we did the best uh, the first 10 minutes and after we got settled in I thought we did a good job of getting after them. Yeah here's a short-handed opportunity Nick Schmaltz feeding Drake Kajula he doesn't miss from there very often follows it up gets another chance uh, at a goal and then at the other end you mentioned Cam Johnson settling in he makes a couple great saves uh, here on the short side. He was in great position to make these saves. Yeah, you know what, we pre-scouted that. You know, they have a guy kind of lingering by the paint there uh, and on a turnover they'll put it right down there and again we did a good job of uh, uh, making sure they didn't get a goal. Midway through the first then here, a almost goal by Rhett Gardner out in front. Your team had good zone time leading up to this. Uh, but the ref right there on top of it to say no goal. And then Austin Pagansky, Johnny on the spot here to capitalize on an opportunity. Can't bury the wraparound opportunity, though. Yeah, the key on those two chances with our four-check, I thought we got after him with not only one guy, but two guys on the play. Four minutes to go in the period. UND had controlled a lot of zone time, but Omaha capitalizing on an opportunity here. Justin Parizek to Jake Gensel, who's been such a force for Omaha against North Dakota all season, gets his 17th of the year. It's 1-0 Omaha after the first. In the second, though, your team answers less than two minutes in. Yeah, starts with the RO zone entry with Austin Pagansky uh, driving the net and uh, you know he tries to get to the net but the, the second part of the play was Tucker Pullman following up and made a great shot past uh, Blankenberg. Pullman's fourth of the year ties it at one. Pullman's first goal since January 2nd and that's a theme we'll see throughout the weekend too is guys scoring that haven't in some time. Five minutes later Omaha trying to answer. Cam stops the centering shot there then at the 12 minute mark of the period UND scores again, Poolman to Luke Johnson on a nice patient play here by both of these guys in the offensive zone, Coach. Yeah, I thought we did a good job all weekend of protecting pucks down low, uh, using our bodies and then finding an open man and in that situation, Tucker uh, made a good play to start, the, to start the goal. And as we see so many times too, there's bodies out in the front wearing white shirts. The screen out in front helped that one. Johnson's eighth of the year makes it 2-1 and it's his first goal since January 22nd. Two minutes later, UND with a chance to extend the lead. Besser to Schmaltz. Nice stick save here by Alex Blankenberg. Keeps it a 2-1 hockey game. Then with 5-10 to go in the period, a key crucial moment here. Luke Johnson leaves his feet and gets a five-minute game misconduct here. So that puts your PK unit on the five-minute penalty kill without Troy Stetcher, what an effort these guys had. Yeah, you know what, it's one of those things on a five-minute major, uh, either you can get momentum or you can give the other team momentum if they score some goals. And I thought our penalty kill uh, did a great job when we rolled the whole five minutes. We used a lot of guys and, uh, and gained momentum in the game. Yeah, they only got one shot on net that whole five-minute stretch, certainly a, a key. Then. Uh, as we move into the third period after this, uh, as your team actually generated a shorthanded opportunity on the five minute kill as well. As we go to the third, less than a minute in on a four on four and when things open up for your team, you're able to capitalize and Drake Kajula makes no mistake here. Yeah, how many times have we seen that play uh, on, a, on entry, him shooting through a defenseman and uh, you know getting the top corner and he does a very good job. But again, that came after us killing that five minute major in the second period. Started the third period, we got momentum off it. 
Absolutely. How many times do we see him deke around the defenseman? That's what I was expecting to see there, but it's Kazula's first goal since he returned from injury. His last goal came January 16th to keep that theme going. Five minutes later, Omaha answers back, though. Gensel behind the net to Frederick Olafson out front, and that makes it a 3-2 game. You know what? Uh, I thought our D zone coverage was very good all weekend. Uh, this was one where you know a good player made a play through our uh, five men in the house uh, box there, and uh, again, they capitalized on it. Johnson would, as he typically does, settle right down though after that, uh, shutting it down from there with three saves here coming up. He had 20 saves on 22 shots. Uh, just a remarkable effort uh, from your netminder on this night. And then less than a minute to go, Besser's going to cap it off with an empty netter, his 21st of the year. As your team goes on to get the victory, 4-2 would be the final score. Yeah, I thought uh, you know our guys did a good job of uh, puck management, game management in the third period to close out, and then obviously uh, Besser with another goal, uh, just adding to his uh, totals here. Keys to the game, uh, only allowing four shots in the second period, I thought was crucial. The penalty kill went three for three, still number one in the country since December 1st. Here's your players' reflections afterwards. Yeah, you know, you uh, you just got to stay patient, and eventually, if you stick with your game plan, you know, there'll be a break here or there, or, or they'll crack eventually, and uh, you just got to capitalize on those opportunities. Yeah, I think our whole team had a little extra step in their game today. We really played as a team, and uh, things were clicking. Uh, getting puck steep, getting a few nice passes, and some really nice shots from Jake Ajula and Luke Johnson. So, as a team, I thought we played really well today. I think every game from here on out is, uh, is a must win for us. It's just uh, you know, a goal for ours in the locker room at the start of the season to uh, you know, win the league and obviously put ourselves in a good position for the NCAA tournament here. And uh, you know, I think these, uh, the rest of the games we have left here in the regular season are must wins for us. And it was just uh, you know, it was a huge, uh, it was a great team effort by everyone to uh, get those three points tonight. Coach, the pace of play was uh, up and down the ice on Friday night. Your team seems to have the ability to be able to play, whether it's fast or maybe a little bit more methodical. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Uh, you know, at this time of year, uh, transition is going to be a big deal. And again, we try to emulate that through practice as far as uh, our play with the puck. And, uh, you know, you're seeing a lot of teams do that. So, again, uh, you know, we play hard away from the puck, but when we have it, we want to make sure that we get after them. We mentioned that five-minute penalty kill that you had. What made the penalty kill so effective on Friday night? You switched things up a little bit. Yeah, I think initially, you know, I, we always talk about when you start a penalty kill, you always have to try to get a clear early uh, and not get hemmed in your zone. And I thought our guys did a good job of clearing pucks and, and making them uh, get the breakout. So, again, uh, that's a big deal, face-offs and clears. UND gets the win on Friday night. They go for the sweep and then some, as we'll tell you about in our next segment as Coach and I return right here after the break. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by RydellCars.com, Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, and Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back. Following Friday night's victory, UND going for the sweep in Omaha at Baxter Arena. Coach, let's go to Saturday night's highlights and a much different flow on Saturday night versus Friday night. Friday night we talked about it was up and down the ice, a lot of odd man rushes created. Saturday night though, seemed a lot more methodical. Teams were establishing the zone a little bit more. Yeah, a little, a little bit more uh, tighter checking game. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, energy level uh, was probably a little bit lower, but I thought our guys uh, played hard nonetheless. You get Troy Stetcher back in the lineup. A nice shot there deflected by Schmaltz out in front. Doesn't get the goal. Six minutes in, a great chance here for UND. Schmaltz to Paul Ledoux, and he almost gets this one to trickle in. Yeah, you know what? I thought it was a good job of uh, our OZ entry and uh, our D-men jumping up in plays. I think Paul Ledoux, Tucker Pullman, those guys have been jumping up and helping out on the offense uh, quite a bit lately. A couple of guys there ready for the rebound, too. Then shortly after that, UND working on a power play, and Drake Kajula, you know he wants that one back. Yeah, he <laughs> saw his head kick back there a little bit, and uh, I'm sure he wants that one back. But again, he's getting chances, and that's a big deal if he's getting chances. Under five to go, then UND does get the all-important first goal here on Saturday night. Keaton Thompson, another guy ending a long goal-scoring drought, makes it one to nothing. Yeah, good play by Johnny Simonson on the wall, and uh, D-man slashing through the neutrals or the offensive zone to get that puck. And again, uh, Johnny creates that play with his head up and finding uh, Thompson go down the middle of the ice. And the monkey off of Thompson's back, his first goal since the season opener back on October 9th against Lake Superior State. 
I'm sure it felt like forever for him. Nice to get one in the back of the net finally. Second period then. Play starts to open up a little bit here. Justin Parizek with the one-timer cam there for the stop. And then seconds later, Besser is going to come back at the other end with a wraparound opportunity. Yeah, again, uh, you can see it started with our offensive zone forecheck. We get a puck back and using the end of the end wall, the, uh, the, the yellow there. And uh, Besser does a nice wrap there, almost scores. Five and a half minutes then into the middle frame, and what a play here for UND's second goal of the night. Paganski feeding Drake Kajula, and just what an individual effort by Kajula here. You know what, and again, uh, that play started because we, we changed at the right time. We got a fresh body, and Drake Kajula, they lost coverage, and uh, Austin makes a great great play to him for, uh, for a big goal. There were different angles of the replay here that made it actually look conflicting of whether or not it was Kajula's goal or Paganski's goal. Both of them had their sticks going up in the air, but both of them were plenty good. This was reviewed, uh, they, the sticks were low enough. It makes it 2-0, uh, 17th goal of the year for Kajula. Then less than a minute later, another great opportunity here. Chizik and Jana Tweenen with a two-on-one opportunity. Yeah, uh, you know, their D-man pinched up the strong side and we had a, had a two-on-one and uh, just almost executed a good play there. And Evan Wenninger back in net for Omaha on Saturday night. He played a relatively good game for the Mavs. A minute after that, though, UND gets back on the board again. Great feed from Stetcher to Bryn Chizik for the goal coming up here, Coach. Yeah, uh, good play off the rush, and uh, and then in zone here you can see a puck goes back to the point. I thought Troy Stetcher did a great job of making a great play there, but keeping his head up, finding uh, Chizik on the back door. That's just a veteran savvy move by your defenseman there. Chizik's 10th of the year, makes it 3 nothing, and Chizik, his first goal in more than a month since January 23rd, as that theme continues for your team on the weekend. And uh, your team could feel the momentum, I would think, at this point with a 3 0 advantage. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that was a big goal to, to, to get another one and a bigger lead. But the biggest thing is uh, our players, when they score goals, they acknowledge uh, the guy making the play. Yeah, Chizik right there to point out Stetcher to give him acknowledgement. Later in the period, Omaha finally starts to generate some offensive opportunities. Jake Gensel goes off the crossbar, and then Luke and Luke team up here. Snug Snuggerud with the shot from the point, tipped out in front by No Guard, his fourth of the year, makes it a 3 1 game as the teams head into the locker room for the second time on Saturday night. You come out of the third period with a short-handed opportunity. Bryn Chizik with a great individual play here. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good job of defending right here. And, uh, you know, obviously the turnover, he gets a breakaway. He makes a great move, and uh, Winninger made a great glove save on it. Yeah, nearly makes it a 4-1 game there. Then back at the other end, Cam Johnson once again sealing the deal for you again, making a couple saves here. He had 26 saves on 27 shots Saturday night and faced 21 shots over the final two periods. Yeah, you know what, he uh, he made big saves at key times. He, he wasn't uh, looked upon uh, very often in the game, but he made some key saves. UND looking to close it out here. This was a terrific play set up here. Jana Tween into Alan and to Paganski. But Paganski can't quite get the uh, finisher here, but <laughs> yeah. great opportunity. Yeah, they've had a lot of chances, and uh, again, uh, you know, their goaltender made some big saves too. Five minutes to go then. Hustle play by Brock Besser. Talk us through this one. He prevents icing here, so critical. Well, uh, you know, we've scored a number of goals uh, off the uh, our forecheck, and again, there you see again, if you don't have that first guy going in to disrupt their breakout, that goal doesn't happen. Absolutely. So 4 1 is the final on Saturday night. Penalty kill goes 3 for 3 once again. The win and a St. Cloud State loss clinches a share of the Penrose Cup for UND for the second straight year. Here's your players reacting to the game and to the accomplishment afterwards. To be honest, I think this was our uh, most complete 120-minute uh, weekend of the, of the year. So, um, you know, we got to decide if uh, we're content with where we are, if we want to be committed to getting better. So uh, we still got a lot of ways to go this year. Yeah, I mean, it was a huge series. Uh, we know it was going to be a tough one coming in, and to get a, get not only one but two wins, uh, that's pretty huge for us. And, I mean, I, the, you know, you can't have you can't have st steps back this time of year, and it's just a it's great timing to have momentum, you know, going down the stretch. Yeah, I thought it was definitely our most complete. I thought uh, we're starting to play the way we need to win down the stretch, uh, shut down defensively, just uh, making the most of our opportunities offensively, not cheating for anything. So uh, it's a good sign from a hockey club. Obviously, we got a long ways to go, but it's a good right step. Talk about the importance of at least getting to share that Penrose this year. Yeah, it's huge. Um, you know, obviously the boys are pretty pumped up with, uh, you know, clinching at least a share of that, like you said. But you know, we're not we're not finished. Um, you know, we want to win that outright by ourselves. Yeah, I mean that that feels really good in the locker room. The locker room is really excited. Um, but definitely, we don't want to share it. You know, we want to make sure that next week can we uh, at least get you know one win and make sure that uh, you know we don't we don't have to share that trophy. Coach, it was really evident on Saturday night your team did a great job of controlling the pace of play. 
Was it the most 120 complete minutes? Do you think over this series for your team this season? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, over the last couple of weekends we've been playing the right way, and uh, you know, uh, the biggest part of our team and having success is the depth of our team. Uh, you know, with our four lines, six defensemen, and, and Cam making great saves at great times. So again, this is a time of year you want to be playing well, and our guys are playing well. And again, uh, clinching the Penrose Cup for the second straight year, much more to do. How how much celebrating was there really afterwards? It didn't seem like much, the vibe we got from the players. Well, you know what? The guys were excited. They were excited because that's a, it's a tough accomplishment to, 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 uh, to attain, and, uh, and our guys were excited. But the biggest thing is focusing on the next challenge, and the next challenge is getting ready for the postseason here. Absolutely. Well, one thing UND did well all season long was winning on the road. When Coach and I come back, we're going to talk about that topic next here on North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by RydellCars.com, Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, and Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back. We've already mentioned that UND has solidified its 17th conference championship. That's most in the NCAA. Something else is the most in the NCAA is for this season. 13 road victories and 17 opportunities, Coach. That's not an easy thing to do. What does it say about the character of this team, what they've been able to do outside of this building this year? Well, it tells me the guys like the road. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, you know, they, they have that mentality that, uh, you know, whether you're playing at the Ralph, which is we're very fortunate to be in front of a lot of loyal and passionate fans. Our, our fans travel too on the road. That's a big part of it, having fans come and support us on the road. But our guys having the mentality to play the same way, whether we're at home or on the road. They take such a business trip mentality it seems like every time we talk to them about going on the road yet it almost makes you lose sight that these are young guys and I know when I was their age and probably when you were their age making good choices when you're on the road not always the easiest thing to do how, how much does that kind of get lost in the shuffle about just the maturity of these guys well you know what uh, I, I think it goes back to leadership in our locker room like uh, you know we got a lot of good uh, senior junior leaders in our locker room that are telling our younger guys to do the right things and they are and, and again it's about that attention to detail that focus that preparation once we get on the road that it is business and that we got to take care of it it's something that will certainly come in play because after this weekend and the following weekend you're going to be playing a lot of games hopefully outside of this building in the near future yeah absolutely and again we've addressed that too and uh, you know we're going to be get, getting down to situations where it's uh, you only get one chance you, uh, and then uh, the, the season either keeps going or it doesn't we want to keep going road games in the regular season are a thing of the past for this year's north dakota team they're back at home this weekend still to come on the program coach and i will preview western michigan and we've got much more right after this break North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by RydellCars.com, Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, and Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. UND sophomore goaltender Cam Johnson has been named one of 26 nominees for this year's Mike Richter Award, given annually to the nation's top goaltender. Johnson is second nationally in goals against average and save percentage. The five finalists for the award will be announced on March 16th. Following last weekend's results, North Dakota has jumped to number two in the pairwise rankings this week, while St. Cloud State falls to third. And UND needs just one point this weekend to clinch the Penrose Cup outright as they sit six points ahead of St. Cloud State and Denver in the NCHC standings. An outright conference championship also gives North Dakota a number one seed heading into next week's NCHC quarterfinals. The club has also moved up to number two in the latest USCHO.com poll, picking up one first place vote along the way. There's more to come on this week's show as Coach and I return after this break to preview this weekend's tilt against Western Michigan. Stay with us. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by RydellCars.com, Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, and Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. 
Welcome back. It's Western Michigan and North Dakota inside this very building this weekend. Coach, it's uh, the last regular season series here inside this building. You know you'll be here the following weekend, but I imagine there will be some emotions running through the guys as seniors will be celebrated on Saturday, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we've, we've already addressed that. You know, we have one regular season weekend left. Uh, a lot of things that go into that. You know, obviously, we want to keep playing the right way, playing well. Uh, senior weekend, we want to acknowledge that of uh, the guys that have spent four years. And by the way, that's gone pretty quick for those guys. Uh, so again, uh, we want to make sure that we uh, we're ready for the weekend. And uh, Western Michigan, Western Michigan's a tough opponent. Yeah, Western Michigan will come in with only one road win on the season to their credit. But the last time you played them in Kalamazoo, very physical series. I imagine you're anticipating something very similar this weekend. Absolutely, they're they're a tough team to play against. They're big and heavy, and and, and they play the right way. Uh, you know, they're, they're trying to, to play, uh, you know, for the postseason here and play well. And again, we got to make sure that we're ready for them. How do you create that always important time and space that is so valuable when you play the Broncos in the style that they like to play? I think the biggest thing is quick puck moving, keep our feet moving. Again, playing fast. Again, if you if you allow yourself to slow down, it allows them to, to play good D-zone coverage. And, and again, we got to make sure that we're playing fast with the puck. And uh, this is an opportunity for you guys, uh, teams this time of the year, if you can get out to a quick start, they can start to go in a little bit of a shell. Is establishing a quick start something you're going to address this weekend? 100%. And again, that's the way you have to play uh, from here on out. you, you got to try to uh, uh, start on the right end of games and not chase games. And again, uh, we want to make sure that we're, we're on the right end of it. Well, good luck this weekend, Coach. I know you want to win that Penrose Cup outright. You need one point to do it. Go get them this weekend. Thanks a lot, Greg. All right, and we want to remind you that we will have Saturday's series finale from the Ralph right here on Midco Sports Network. 7 o'clock is our coverage time on Saturday night. We hope you'll join us then on Midco Sports Network 2. That's channel 322 for most of you. Check your local listings. You won't want to miss it. Thanks for joining us here on North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry.